Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast, where we delve into the powerful benefits of a holistic, high raw vegan lifestyle for achieving optimal health, brain function, and overall well-being. I'm your host, Samantha Salmon, Certified Integrative Nutrition Coach and Brain Health Licensed Trainer, and today we're talking about the secret power of gut bacteria and how short-chain fatty acids and gut hormones can help transform your health and energy levels. First, to set this, the stage, right? Many of us, especially those of you who are new to healthy, clean eating, right? You're just now leaning in to the information and paying attention. You have hyper-palatable food, fast food all over. It's pulling, in, pulling you in. Your brain is basically trapped in the cycle of addiction with these foods that have dialed up fat, salt, and sugar, and added in some chemicals in there, right, that keeps you addicted, even though you know the information and you have access to healthy, clean foods, you still feel the pull of those hyper palatable foods and the convenience of it, right? Even I've been talking to a lot of you who are really good cooks in the kitchen, but it's just a matter of convenience and the fact that this stuff is all over. It's all around. So we're going to dive into how the gut really can support you in making this change. Because basically what I do for my clients in my coaching programs now is I have food delivered to them so we can repopulate the gut the microbiome with some healthy gut bacteria so that they crave healthy foods, that they want the healthy foods because your gut bacteria is actually sending messages to your brain, aka neurotransmitters, telling you you want these things, right? You want the Popeyes, the Taco Bell, whatever it is that's in your neighborhood. And in in coaching, we reorient our mind around some of these thoughts that are coming up, what's true, what's not true, and how we can take control, take the power back from these gut bugs that are basically parasites on you, right? Trying to dictate your life, dictate what you want to eat, how to think about food, right? We're reorienting that, right? So we can take control. The first thing I wanna um, talk about as we think about the gut microbiome, how it's so fascinating, the health of the gut is essential for a healthy brain, for a healthy metabolism, right? And if you're on a weight loss journey, this is what's gonna mobilize getting rid of that excess fat when you have a healthy gut microbiome. When you eat food, your gut bugs, basically they eat the fiber, and in that process, they produce short chain fatty acids, which reduce inflammation. They also produce some other hormones, which we'll talk about. But in terms of the short chain fatty acids, the short chain fatty acids helps to reduce inflammation and stabilize blood sugar levels. When you eat fiber rich food, you notice a decrease in inflammation related symptoms such as joint pain, fatigue, right? And you just feel better in your body. If you want to increase uh, your energy levels and decrease inflammation in the body. I'm talking about sinuses, I'm talking about arthritis, I'm talking about anything like that. Then you wanna eat more fiber. So that means incorporating foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, you know, your fiber-rich proteins like uh, quinoa, and fermented foods are really helpful. Coconut yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, even miso, which is worth a try. Fermented foods can be really different for people who aren't used to growing up eating these types of foods. They're, they tend to be sour. Some people like sour, some people don't like the sour flavor. I'm one of those who don't really like sour flavor, but I've tried all of these things, including miso. And yes, it makes foods taste different. But once you understand the power of it, the nutritional power, it's worth to, you know, diversify your foods a little bit and try something new. This is part of the journey of healthy, clean eating is you're going to be trying new foods, stepping out of your comfort zone with the foods that you used to eat that's, you know, leading you to disease and dysfunction and dysbiosis in the body into some new foods, right, to try. And in this journey, you can make a list, the foods you like, the foods you don't like. In this process, you also want to stay hydrated, drinking at least half your body weight in ounces of water so you can help your digestive system just process the fiber more effectively. This helps to eliminate any issues with um, gas and, and bloating if you're properly hydrated. Another hormone that's produced by the gut 
um, when we eat fiber is ghrelin. Ghrelin is known as the hunger hormone that sync signals to your brain when it's time to eat. Understanding how this works, you can implement unexpected solutions like regular meal timing, right? I know folks who are like, they're eating all random hours of the day. And what that can do is that can set you up for failure when it comes to healthy eating because you run into a situation where you're super hungry, right? But if you put yourself on a schedule, you can have stable blood sugar throughout the day so you don't have these these periods of like extreme, where you feel like extremely hungry, where you're getting a, a headache, you feel sick type of thing, right? I used to go through this actually when as a youth throughout my youth, but it showed up even in college, like just throughout my whole youth before I went vegan and even more so um, when I started to experiment with fasting, this really helped me because the thing with insulin resistance, your blood sugar levels are crazy, right? Once you get that under control and things start to even out, on top of the fact that you want to eat at a regular schedule because your whole body's running on a circadian rhythm, but once you clean up your body to get to a place of insulin sensitivity, these hangry episodes, right, where your mood changes, your whole disposition changes because of because you haven't had food in the last two three hours, this kind this adjusts, right? It adjusts. You get to a more even keel when you don't have these blood sugar issues. So first of all, how you start, because most people aren't going to jump into long-term fasting right away. First, start eating plants. Get into a regular schedule with a plant-exclusive diet where you're eating consistently. You don't have to necessarily eat breakfast before 11 everyone else if you're not getting hungry at that time, right? And it's not driving you to eat um, unhealthy foods later, right? Just listen to your hunger cues, listen to your body, and make sure you're on a schedule with that. So if you naturally get hungry at noon and not earlier, then that would be your breakfast time because you're breaking your fast. You've been fasting since you went to bed till then, and that will be your breakfast. You don't have to necessarily think breakfast foods because a standard American diet has folks thinking that they should load up on high glycemic carbs at the start of the day, which drops your frontal lobes and you're not in flow state, you're feeling tired, right? How productive can you really be? Optimize your nutrition by getting your omega-3 fatty acids, getting in lots of greens and incorporating some fiber-rich protein in there, which greens have a high amount of protein per calorie, right? It's a protein source with very little calories so you can load up on that. Um, and um, you can have other fiber-rich proteins if you need something more satiating. You can even add, I already mentioned the omega-3 fats like avocado, but you can add walnuts, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, right? All of that stuff to make your breakfast more substantial without crashing your energy levels. Another thing when it comes to insulin sensitivity, which is basically the goal, insulin sensitivity allows you your body to metabolize the sugar properly when you consume anything with sugar, right? And in that process, sugar doesn't end up staying in the bloodstream and damaging your, your blood vessels, right? Insulin sensitivity is the goal. Now, when we eat food, the gut bacteria, it's eating the fiber, and it also produces GLP-1 and GIP, both of which are gut hormones that improve insulin sensitivity by signaling to the pancreas to produce more insulin. So both of these hormones are called incretins, GLP-1, you've heard of, that's glucagon-like peptide 1, which is the basis of the weight loss drugs that have come out that were originally for type 2 diabetics, but now folks who are struggling with weight loss have been using Wagovi, the Zempix, right? These are GLP-1 drugs, and they mimic the hormone that, that makes the pancreas release more insulin, and it slows down how fast your stomach empties which helps to keep blood, blood sugar levels stable. But for the weight loss people, because it slows down how fast your stomach empties, you feel like satisfied longer, so you're eating less, right? However, uh, you could do the same thing with fiber-rich foods, um, specifically your cruciferous vegetables. Um, and yeah, if you load up on crucifers, 
Then and also some healthy fats like avocados. They tend to make things more satiating, so you eat less. But specifically, the cruciferous vegetables loading up on that has you feeling full longer and releasing fat. Whereas the avocado may not have you releasing fat because you're loading up on fat, right? Even though it's the healthy fat, if you're in a weight loss. Um, situation and you have high insulin resistance, which you can see if you have a lot of body fat around the midsection, that's typically a clue that you're dealing with some insulin resistance, then you want to lean towards those greens, right? To improve your metabolism and burn that fat fast. The GIP hormone that's made from the gut bacteria is called gastric inhibitory polypeptide. And this hormone, it helps your pancreas make more insulin after you eat and helps to your body manage the sugar better, right? So when we eat fiber-rich foods, not only are we looking to populate the gut microbiome with these healthy bacteria to support the integrity of the gut, which then supports the nourishment of our brain, but also the health of our metabolism, right? We've seen in studies where they've done fecal transplants, where they're basically taking bacteria from a slim person into an obese person and that obese person gets slim and vice versa, right? If you put the bacteria from a obese person into a slim person, that slim person gets obese. So this bacteria has powerful benefits. It's not even just about weight too, it's about your mental health. Like you can transfer depression, anxiety with these uh, fecal transplants, right? Because of the power of the gut microbiome. And you can manipulate this yourself without doing a fecal transplant. Um, You just eat a fiber-rich diet, right? Eat beans, eat lentils, eat vegetables, have fruit. Eat your fiber-rich proteins. Have your omega-3 fatty acids, right? Like the actual food. Not necessarily the supplements, but the actual food. And exercise regularly because when you do physical activity, it does enhance insulin sensitivity further. So if you want to learn more um, about how to beat insulin resistance and boost your energy, I highly recommend you join my upcoming training. And the link for that is going to be in the description to this video. I hope this video has been super helpful. If there's been any insights and ahas, anything surprising that I've mentioned, I would love to hear it in the um, comment section below. And also, out of everything that we've discussed today on this video, what area are you struggling the most with? I may just do a response video to that to help you out on your health and wellness journey. So in the meantime, I hope to see you in my training. Check out the link to learn more and to register. Take care.